NBA fans, the breaking news of the day, legendary point guard and now turned head coach Steve Nash is the next head coach of the Brooklyn Nets. I'm your host, Jimmy Crowther, breaking down all the latest NBA news and rumors. And we're starting off with this one as Steve Nash has inked that four-year deal to become the next head coach of Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and the rest of the Brooklyn Nets. Now, I think the real main reason that this came into play is because Steve Nash was working with the Golden State Warriors when Kevin Durant was there, when they were making their legendary dynasty run, and he formed a very strong relationship with Kevin Durant during that time, coached with him a lot during the offseason as well. Chris Mannix of Sports Illustrated tweeted this out this morning after the hire came into play. He said, Kevin Durant worked with Nash in Golden State, where Nash was a player development consultant the last five years. Years. So he doesn't have any official coaching experience under his belt, but when you're a player development kind of guy, you form relationships with players, and that's probably what led to his hire as Kevin Durant was probably calling up the Nets and saying, hey, get my buddy Steve Nash in here. Let's make him the next head coach. So I want you guys to grade the decision to hire Steve Nash, A, B, C, D, or F. I'm going to give it a B for now. I want to give it an A, but I don't think you can call us a home run until you see some proven success underneath Steve Nash. However, I like it more than just sticking with the same old boring, rusty old coaches like the Jason Kidds, the Tyron Lues, the Mike Browns, the Mark Jacksons. Instead, you take a swing for the fences and maybe Steve Nash pans out to be the next great head coach. Now, the Nets have Jacques Vaughn, and Jacques Vaughn was the head coach for the time being after they fired Kenny Atkinson, and he will stay in Brooklyn as Steve Nash's top assistant. Look, Jacques Vaughn really exceeded expectations inside the NBA bubble. He had a depleted team without KD, without Kyrie, without DeAndre Jordan, without Torian Prince, without Nick Claxton, without Wilson Chandler. There were a ton of players not in the bubble, and Jacques Vaughn made this Brooklyn Nets team still scrappy and competitive with guys like Karis LeVert, Tyler Johnson, Jamal Crawford in the mix. For them during the bubble he's gained a lot of respect from the players inside that locker room because of what he did with them in the bubble and in the time that Kenny Atkinson was absent from this team now as Steve Nash takes over a new era sets in for the Brooklyn Nets and your new starting five is going to look something like this Kyrie Irving is a starting point guard of course 100% healthy one of the best point guards in the NBA Spencer Dinwiddie was an incredible backup but with Joe Harris being a free agent I've slotted him into that starting two guard position Karis LeVert was a breakout player inside the NBA bubble he was doing things and scoring the ball at will and nearly got this team further than anyone expected them to go Jared Allen should be the starting center. I, I don't think DeAndre Jordan should be the starter anymore. He is past his prime, and Jared Allen is just now entering his prime. And then, of course, coming off the Achilles tear, you've got Kevin Durant at the starting forward position, and they're hoping he can get back to his MVP level. So here's the question now, because, hey, good for Steve Nash. I want to clap it up. I'm, I'm, con I'm congratulating him. I'm glad he got the job. But now it's all about winning. And there is a window here with Steve Nash. He signed a four-year deal. So you got to think there's a four-year window for him to win a title. So in those four years, will Steve Nash win a ring with Brooklyn? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I'm going to say yes if they can get Kevin Durant healthy. Now, one guy that wants to win a title but might have to go somewhere else to do it is Giannis Antetokounmpo of the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, Milwaukee is currently down 2-0 to zero in the second round to the Miami Heat, despite being the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. And the smoke is starting to rise inside the bubble that if Giannis and the Bucks can't win it all this year, that dude is not Giannis. He's Giannis in free agency and maybe via trade. He might say, hey, Bucks, I'm ready to go. I need to be gone before my contract is up. I think Giannis is a guy who might be like, he'll give Brooklyn, or excuse me, give Milwaukee a heads up. And Milwaukee's like, all right, well, we're going to try to get something in exchange for you. Now, after the Game 2 loss to the Miami Heat, which came down to some clutch free throws and some interesting calls from the NBA officials, who have been terrible in the bubble, by the way, but that's for a different story, different day, Giannis had this to say, I'm going to do whatever Coach Mike Budenholzer tells me to do. That's what I've been doing all year. Obviously, I'd love to play 48 minutes, but he sees the game. He coaches the game. And this came after some questionable decision-making by Mike Budenholzer, and this is interesting because... Giannis has continued to put the blame on Budenholzer. 
he has continued to really just deflect everything to what the team is doing or what coach decides to do. Now, in the playoffs between his first round in the, with against Orlando and now against the Miami Heat, he has still been his top five player in the NBA self. 29 points per game, 15 rebounds, six assists, and shooting the ball actually at a decent rate, 37% from three. But when he misses, man, he misses bad. Now, another reason I think Giannis could be Giannis is because this team is not built for long-term success. Chris Middleton's your next leading scorer behind Giannis at 20 points per game, but he's already 28 years old. Now, that's not old, but it is definitely, you know, right in the back half of your prime. Eric Bledsoe is a 30-year-old undersized point guard who's putting up 14 points per game. Brooke Lopez is your third leading scorer at 12 points per game, but he's 31. I don't know how much he has left in the tank. George Hill at 9.4 points per game, fourth leading scorer. I guess I should say fifth behind Giannis at 33 years old. And then they got a nice young piece in Dante DiVincenzo. But in all honesty, if Giannis wants to win, not just now, but for the long term, his best bet, best bet might be to force a trade or leave in 2021. So I want you guys to make the prediction. I've asked this question multiple times, and I'm going to do a video very, very soon on the top five teams that could land Giannis on Setacumpo. So make sure you subscribe for that. I want you to tell me, where will Giannis play next season? You get to make the prediction. You get to play Giannis's agent. Where is he going to go? Just let me know. And if he does get traded, if he forces that trade and gets out of Milwaukee, we're going to be live for it. We've done live videos all year long. We're going to continue to do them in the offseason. We'll be live more often than not. So you're going to want to make sure you are subscribed and you've got your notifications turned on or else you're going to miss some breaking news. And I've got all the best coverage on the NBA, on free agency, on the draft, and of course on Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now let's go to Greg Popovich of the San Antonio Spurs, who's been there since I was born, coming out of before that. Well before coming out of my mother's stomach, he was uh, definitely there, and he's been there forever. But now, Greg Popovich has put his mansion in San Antonio on the market, and he is selling it according to multiple reports. Now, the Brooklyn Nets were very much interested in Greg Popovich before they hired Steve Nash, but they must have gotten some kind of sign that eh, maybe he's not moving on from San Antonio. However, it might be time to rebuild in San Antonio, and I don't think Greg Popovich is at the age or really is the kind of coach that you need during a rebuild. Greg Popovich is the coach that you want to win right now with because he's done it before. He's done it for a long time in San Antonio. He has five championship rings, one for each finger. He's got 22, I guess on one hand, just so we're clear there. He has 22 playoff uh, appearances. He's made it more often than not. He's won 1,000. 277 games and he's only lost 614 that is an incredible record for a guy who's been in the league forever but this Spurs team is not built for immediate immediate success this is not a team that's going to go on to probably even sniff the playoffs next year DeJounte Murray and Bryn Forbes that's a fun young backcourt I like Derek White off the bench a lot too but then you got DeMar DeRozan who is not Toronto DeMar DeRozan. He's not a guy you can build around. He's a guy that's a nice third or fourth piece on a championship contender. LaMarcus Aldridge, the dude's 35 and has constant injuries. He cannot be your lead scorer on this team. And then your power forward, someone like Trey Lyles, maybe a Rudy Gay. This team is not making the playoffs. And maybe Popovich is saying, hey, I don't have time to waste. I got to get out of San Antonio and go somewhere that I can win right now. And one way you can win right now is by picking up one of these NBA jerseys from Fanatics. Go to chatsports.com slash NBA jerseys because they're doing something real special. When you order your jersey, free shipping. It's just that simple. Everybody hates paying for shipping and handling. You don't have to pay for that anymore when you go to Fanatics. Chatsports.com slash NBA jerseys. And one of my favorite things they do, I believe they call it jersey insurance is they will replace a jersey if you buy one, and then your favorite player gets traded. So let's say you go and get a Giannis jersey from Milwaukee, and then maybe he goes somewhere else. You can get that jersey replaced thanks to our friends at Fanatics. Now one guy who's not going anywhere anytime soon is Donovan Mitchell of the Utah Jazz because it's official. They are going to offer him a rookie max extension. He's now eligible for it this offseason, and the Utah Jazz said right after they lost to the Denver Nuggets that they're going to give their star guard five years, $170 million. At just 23 years old, Donovan Mitchell is the kind of player that you want to build around, especially in the modern-day NBA. He's a well-built guard. He can shoot the three-ball really well, and he steps up when it really counts. In a seven-game riveting series, 
Donovan Mitchell put up amazing numbers. I saw people tweeting out that Donovan Mitchell is Dwayne Wade with a three-point jump shot. Maybe pump the brakes just a little bit till we see him win something. But in the playoffs, in that first round, he put up 36 points per game, had five boards and five assists consistently, and he was shooting over nine three-pointers per game and making 51% of those three-pointers that he was shooting. This is a well-deserved max contract extension for Donovan Mitchell, a kid who, coming out of the draft out of Louisville, was viewed as an older prospect that guys didn't want to take a chance on. You look at the guards taken above him that year, Dennis Smith Jr., Markel Fultz, Lonzo Ball. Donovan Mitchell is head and shoulders above each and every one of those guys. Oh, and Frank Nilakina. Yeah, I think there's some teams that regret not taking Donovan Mitchell that year. So now the question becomes, because he's getting paid like a top 10 player, do you think he is a top 10 player in the NBA? You type 10 for yes, type 0 for no. I, I'm not ready to put him there yet. I think if I sat down and I listed out 10 players, I could easily name 10 players that I'd take above Donovan Mitchell. But he's in that very next tier, probably in that 11 to 20 range. But let me know what you guys think in the comments section below.